All right, good evening everybody. Big happy Thursday evening to you. It's about uh, 7 p.m. A little better than 7 p.m. October 3rd. Uh, we're probably looking at the last sorghum regrowth update until it comes time for harvest. I'll explain that. I'm very pleased, very proud of where this has, uh, where this has come. course I'd like to see it about five six feet but with the weather that we had after harvest I'm in disbelief that uh, we're even looking what we're looking at here I would have to say this entire field <clears throat> is on an average of three foot plus uh, this is the time where I'm extremely happy of how thick I plant this stuff um, yeah, if you pull on the leaf, it's almost chest high, almost. Very impressed with the uh, the broad leaves here. This is that hybrid BMR. <clears throat> uh, I got home a little while ago, just in the nick of time, right before evening chores started. Took care of chores, fed the cows. Took care of the heifers, their grain ration, everything else. Uh, got a couple things out of the way, and yeah, this weather up here, folks, has just been crazy nuts. Now, beyond that tree line, you're seeing uh, the remnants of what would be some sun. That's the first sun that's poked out for a very long time. Um, but we got good things are coming here. I'm seeing, uh, <clears throat> if I'm not mistaken, according to the future forecast, starting Sunday, Sunday morning, we've got like five days of beautiful, beautiful weather coming. It's going to be colder than dog snot, but, um, you know, the chill is coming. It, it's here already. Right now it's about 49 degrees. But uh, some pure sunlight, a little bit of dryness will be great. The cow yards are just disgusting. The cattle are very uncomfortable. Uh, I actually moved them behind the barn just for a little bit of comfort and serenity. We'll take a closer look at that tomorrow. We'll do a couple videos on the cattle and how the cattle are doing. <clears throat> but here's the deal. We've got our killing frost coming, if not tomorrow night, next Friday, according to the future forecast. So... My goal, and don't be pinning a badge on me for being some sorghum expert, because I am far from it. My goal was to harvest sorghum before a killing frost, just to stay away from all the jibber jabber of, uh, you know. What, what it turns into after a frost, it becomes poisonous. For the lack of better words, please, a thousand of you correct me. I, I don't have all the elegant words that I'm probably supposed to have. <clears throat> well, that's not the case this year. Um, pretty tied up, very busy. It's been a very tricky year, but enough about that garbage. We're basically... I guess what I'm trying to say is, you know, you know, I'm going to let that killing frost take place and then uh, go after a harvest um, from what I'm seeing, from what I read and everything else, five to ten days later. Not only harvest five to ten days later after that frost, but then, of course, anything that I get off this field, which right now, I, I, I tell you what, maybe we ought to do a bale contest. Let me think about that. It's hardly fair because of that big spade in the middle uh, that you can hardly see right now. There's a big spade in the middle because I ran out of sorghum seed. Um, anyway, what I'm trying to say is I'm hoping for... Oh, I'm about to lose you here. Battery's about to be dead. Um, I'm hoping for at least 50 bales off of here. That'd be real, real nice. And I, I believe it's quite achievable uh, with the thickness of the sorghum. That 50 bales is going to go a long, long way, folks. We're going to get into that at a different time here. There is a feed crisis 
big feed shortage up here in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. <coughs> There's some uh, farmers that have already declared, one in particular, of course I'm not naming any names, um, has already declared that even with a good corn silage crop, he's three months short of feed. Um, I know multiple other farms that have already declared a month, two month shortages. I don't know. I don't know. I'm short. Uh, I'm not. I'm not doing too good, to be honest with you. And we'll get down to a science on that. We'll probably make a a, a feed a feed video or lack thereof, uh, pro maybe on Saturday, something like that. And I'll kind of show you. I'll tell you what kind of condition I'm in. It's not the greatest. I think I'm going to go ahead and squeak by, but it won't be by much. Not much at all. Thank God for what I call the insurance policies in the silo. I call them that for a reason, and this is the year for that name, insurance policy. The 16-foot diameter has been chuck full since last year. Didn't tap into it. And the amount of corn silage to come is going to save my rear end, including even the 50 bales of sorghum that's going to come off of here. That's that's my bale count anyway, 50. I sure hope that's correct. <coughs> but anyway, I'm doing a lot of blabbing here. I got a lot of things in my mind right now. Um, very happy and fortunate what I see here. The ground is just absolutely saturated. But um, we are close to a harvest. <laughs> 